My name is Muhammad Mara Damien Baharudin and this is my team members which is Nadana Intan, Muhammad Faiz, Muhammad Adib Zikri and also Nur Amira Aina. I'm very delighted to welcome you to today's presentation on tips for negotiating in Russia as part of our cross-cultural management subject. Negotiating in a cross-cultural context demands a keen understanding of the unique nuances and dynamics inherent in the target culture. Today, we turn our attention to Russia, a country with a rich tapestry of history, traditions, and also business practices that significantly influence the negotiation landscape. Why Russia matters in cross-cultural negotiation? The first one is their cultural complexity, whereby Russia's vast expanse is home to diverse cultures and its history is a melting pot of influences from Europe, Asia, and also the Middle East. These cultural intricacies contribute to a negotiation environment that requires a nuanced and informed approach. The second one is their strategic importance. Russia plays a crucial role in global business, geopolitics, and also international relations. Understanding how to navigate negotiations effectively in this context is not just a practical skill, but a strategic necessity for professionals engaged in cross-cultural management. The third one is their unique business practices. Russian business practices are shaped by a blend of historical, societal, and also their cultural factors. From communication styles to decision-making processes, recognizing and adapting to these unique practices is a vital for successful negotiation. What to expect from today's presentations? Hmm. So, let me tell you what. The first one is the negotiation process. The second one is bargaining behaviors. The third one is decision making in Russian context. The fourth one is the communication styles. Last but not least is the conflict management. As we embark on this exploration of negotiating in Russia, my aim is to provide you with actionable insights and tips that you can incorporate into your cross culture management toolkit. Whether you are a seasoned professional or new to international negotiations, I hope this presentation equips you with knowledge and skills that needed for successful negotiations in the Russian business context. Without further ado, let's dive into the fascinating world of negotiation in Russia. Thank you for joining me today. Let's go! So glad that you guys can watch us today. I'm very excited about the topic. Did you guys actually know how the Russian people negotiation in business? So let's check it out together. Hi, Russia is an empire. It considers itself to be an empire. It has an imperial history and it seems itself has continuing to play the role of empire in geopolitics. As a result, most Russian discussion, not just those handled by the Russian government, but also those undertaken by Russian business people are conducted from a power standard point. Negotiation is seen by Russian as a power game or siva, which is force. They will typically present a very tough position at the start of the negotiation and will deliver tough responses to their rival even in the last phase of discussion. Negotiation theories often talk about creating win and win solution that benefit all parties. But Russians are not very good at adjusting to this style of negotiation. Indeed, the word victory in Russian signifies that the opposing team lose or exit the game. The Russian negotiation mentality is a powerful and relatively regret 
approach that ignores emotional and physical elements that are frequently emphasized in negotiation theory. To do business in Russia, entrepreneurs must spend time cultivating contacts and only when they have earned access to close circle of time would they be able to conduct business. Negotiator in Russia will never invest such trust in their colleague. Furthermore, until an entrepreneur has established enduring relationship, they will never be able to complete a transaction. Maggie Me in My Mark Cepat dibuat, sedap dimakan Ber- This is the 5 rules negotiation in Russia First one you have to learn Learn all you can before negotiation Learn about the situation And also the important thing you have to learn about the culture There is no better way to learn about a culture And its mentality than to read relevant books Both non-fiction and fiction Second, you have to observe. Observe this situation. Don't jump in and unconsciously apply your way of communicating and your attitude in the negotiation room. Look at what other people are doing. Third, suspend judgment. If you want to be an effective cross-culture negotiator, you cannot say, this culture is wrong. This culture is low. Our culture is superior. You have to suspend your judgment. There is no right and wrong. Everything is culturally sensitive. Fourth, you have to respect. And an immediate relation of this suspension of judgment, you have to respect the culture. If you respect the other side, you respect the way of doing business in that culture. If you do not respect the culture, the other side will not enter into the negotiation with you. And last but not least, engage. Engage communication and reach out. Don't be afraid to ask questions in polite, respectful manners. Hi, my name is Faiz and right now I will be sharing with you about decision making in Russia. So in Russia, Decision making in business are often centralized and hierarchical because of higher power distance. So by understanding the decision making process and the culture in their country, you can enhance the chances to get a favorable agreements. So here are some tips for navigating decision making in Russia. First of all, you need to identify the key decision makers. Because decisions are often made upstairs by senior executives who consider the best interest of the organization. So you don't expect a quick decision from your immediate contact. You need to be prepared to present your proposal to higher ranking officials and address their concerns. And you have to avoid the bypassing hierarchical structure as this can damage trust and hinder the negotiated process negotiation process now to point number two which is patient and relationship buildings so when you make a decision you need to recognize that building trust and relationship take time <coughs> be patient and invest effort in establishing a rapport with key decision makers you have to socialize outside a formal business settings to create a more personal connection and also be prepared for long discussion, revisiting points and even delays. Point number three is respect hierarchy. As I said earlier, you need to acknowledge the hierarchical structure in Russian companies. Decision often comes from top to down and it is essential to engage with senior management. You have to ensure that your counterparts have the necessary authority to make decisions. Point number four is understanding no. The words no doesn't necessarily mean the end of the deal. Russians often use no as a bargaining tactic to leave room for negotiation. You need to explore the counter proposal and be flexible in your approach by demonstrating a willingness to compromise while holding 
your ground can lead to a favorable outcome. Next, which is reading non-verbal cues. You have to pay attention to a subtle cues like changes in tone, facial expression, and body language. Because this can indicate their level of interest, willingness to compromise, or potential concern. You have to be clear and concise in your communication to avoid misunderstanding. So the last point is understanding external influences. So when you are negotiating with the Russians, you don't underestimate the role of government officials and bureaucratic structures as these external factors can influence decision-making process. So it is crucial to build relationships with relevant players and navigating the bureaucratic landscape. For this part, I would like to share with you about the communication style while negotiating with the Russians. So first and foremost is formality and respect. So when you communicate with the Russian, you need to maintain a formal and respectful tone in your communication, especially in initial interaction. And also, you need to avoid being overly familiar or informal until a strong relationship is established. We want to point number two, which is non-verbal communication. Non-verbal cues play a significant role in Russian communication. So you have to pay attention to body language facial expression and gesture. Maintaining a good eye contact as it is seen as a sign of sincerity and attentiveness. So moving on to point number three, which is direct communication. So when talking to the Russian, they tend to value directness in communication. So you need to be clear and straightforward in expressing your thoughts, idea and expectation. And also, you need to avoid excessive use of indirect language as it is might be perceived as lack of transparency. So for the next point, listening skills. When they are talking to you, you need to have a you need to listen carefully to your counterparts and show that you are value their opinions. And also you need to avoid interrupting and allows for pause in conversations. Uh, for the next point is uh, hierarchy in communication. So, recognize the hierarchical nature of Russian business culture when you communicating within an organization. You need to be aware of the chain of command and address the appropriate level of management by understanding that key decisions are often made at the highest level and communication may flow downward. So, for the Point number six, which is avoiding confrontation. Russian, Russian may be averse to confrontation in business settings. So you need to choose your word carefully and avoid aggressive or confrontational language. If disagreement arise, try to address them diplomatically and seek common ground. So for the next point, which is uh, written communication, Written communication is highly valued, so you need to be ensure that your emails and business proposals are well written, well structured, and professional. And also provide documentation and written summaries of a key point to reinforce verbal agreements. And for the last point is cultural sensitivity. So you need to be sensitive to cultural differences and avoid making assumptions. Familiarize yourself with Russian customs and tradition to enhance cross-cultural management. I mean cross-cultural communication. So you need to show genuine interest in Russian culture and history and be open to discussing non-business topic. As you know, Communication style in Russia may differ from those Western countries. So by understanding these nuances, it is crucial for having a successful business negotiation. So that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Faiz. Hello, everyone. My name is Mama Adib Zikri bin Mama Ali and I will present about the conflict management in Russia. As, as businesses globalize, the ability to manage as cross culture teams become increasingly crucially. Today, we will explore a conflict management in Russia. 
to be gained like diverse into the culture fabric in Russia. In Russia, a strong hierarchical structure prevents a emphasizing respect for the authorities. Managers often make a decision without open questioning, understanding and navigating this hierarchy is essential for a successful management. Additionally, Russians often prioritize collective interests over individual needs. Building a strong team relations is a key for the cross-culture management in Russia. Now, let's explore how conflict approach in Russia businesses. Russia may avoid a direct confrontation and pricing disagreement indirectly. Many should be sensitive by suitable cues and be prepared to address a conflict in more indirect manner. Building trust is crucial. Taking time to establish a personal connection fosters a sense of belonging and lay the foundation for effective conflict resolutions. Now, let's look at the effective strong strategy for resolving the conflicts. Mediation by a neutral third party can facilitate communication and provide an, an ambitious perspective during the conflicts. And lastly, face-to-face -face communication is highly valued in Russia. Handling conflict in person can be more effective than relying on a written communications. So that's all from me and I will pass for the next presentation for the conclusion and recommendations. Thank you. So for our conclusion and recommendations, navigating the intricate walls of Russian negotiations can be daunting. But we think it's very exchanges and strategies that lies a captivating path to mutual success. To conquer these culture champs, embrace not a clash of swords, but a symphony of understanding and respectful collaborations. Firstly, cast aside the soft whisper of indirectness. Russia's favor the tangle of direct communications, meet their frankness with equal clarity, present your argument with unwavering convictions, leave room for the graceful sway of compromise, patient in your silent partner. This negotiation is a marathon, not a sprint. Maintain your composure amongst passionate exchanges. Remember, frustration is a dis discordant note in this culture concerto. Now, prepare for the strategic ballad of your opening offer. Before the music starts, gather market intelligence. A well-researched partner to your propositions, this tango needs confidence. So, present your offer with a prompt. And Flexibility is your secret weapon. Adapt your step to the rhythm of the discussions and find shared ground where post party can be rooted to victory. Nonverbal cues are the whisper of the tent. Form handshake, the unwavering glint in your eye, or speak volume before a word is uttered. Beyond strategy lies the heart of success cultural understanding and respect, a few basic Russian space. Add a charming melody to your approach, while professional attire ensure you enter the ballroom with elegance. Keep like well-chosen accessories to your negotiation tango can further strengthen the connections. But remember, moderation is a key. Over overwhelming gesture, and finally, be prepared to accept attentions to social events, the after party of trust building where relationship truly solidified. In conclusion, the art of Russian negotiation is not a solo performance. It's a collaborative then. Approach the process not as a one-sided battle, but as a symphony of understanding, respect, and flexibility. Let trust be your share melody, adaption your guiding rhythm, and the win-win final your share goal. Stepping onto the culture dance floor with this tip in hand, you will be well off your way to mastering the art of Russian negotiations. The walls where culture awareness and strategic grace lead to resounding success. With this principle as your guide, you will conquer the culture champs and claim your deserved prize, a symphony of success, born from the captivating interplay 
of culture and the unwavering pursuit of mutually beneficial outcome. So that's all from us. Thank you.